Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for being with us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We have such adoration and love for our relationship with you, Lord, that you are with us that there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Lord, that we are free in you. You made us free by your blood, by the cross. We are so thankful, Lord. So thankful, so gracious for all that you do in our lives, Lord. All the re restoration, all the healing, that you do in our lives and all the, the leading that you do as our shepherd. Thank you, we thank you, Lord, that you lead us and guide us through all that we go through. And through all that we go through, you love us as an amazing Father. We, we praise you. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Well, good morning, Abamir. Thank you for tuning in with us. And uh, hopefully you had a, a great worship um, and just feeling the presence of God. We've been praying for you and uh, I pray that this message will bless you. Um, so this week I've been really praying and, and through circumstances and stuff like that. And I was praying through um, and it was a desire of mine really for this message is the sermon on be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. And it, and it really, I'm really excited to go over this sermon because it is so important for us as followers of Christ, us as Christians, to be ready for any circumstance as we may endure. And our main scripture in this is Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. It says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Christ Jesus is our king and he is our leader. That's an amazing father he truly is. And he's leading us from the point of what he has already endured. He's already walked through it. And he shows us through examples and, and prepares us through warning. And he's a great leader, and as he warns us what we should expect from a life serving him in a hostile world, and that what lies ahead. And he tells us what to expect from a life following his footsteps, and, and what his flock of poor, helpless, unregarded sheep expect in the midst of a herd of ravenous wolves to be should we be worried or to be frightened absolutely not why it, it, it's it's because he is the one sending the sheep out he that's where the comfort comes from that he is the one that sheep that sends this sheep, his followers, out. He is the one that empowers them. He protects them. He gives them all that is needed in the midst of the wolves and the hostile world that is out there. And think about it. Really think about this. How much glory does God receive as he sends sheep out in the midst of wolves? Right, and, and to make those wolves retreat and to bring wisdom and so as to cause confusion within the herd of wolves. God always uses the underdog and, and, and to defeat the enemies like Joshua, Gideon, and David, David and Goliath. Jesus is, is teaching us how to behave it's a behavior thing how to behave as we go through our lives as we are expected to minister to a hostile world where wherever that may be in our daily lives work wherever that may be but before he sends out he he disciples 
He wants to teach us what it will be like. That's why it's important for us to be discipled, for us to read and study our scriptures, to study the Bible so we can know how to live our daily lives and to be able to serve Christ well and endure all of this at the same time. The world has been hostile. We know that. And it's coming to a point where it's ramping up. And how hostile it really can be. As Christians have been persecuted ever since the beginning. We, we all know that. And it's not that it's, it's incidentally but being hostile, but purposely. It's purposely being hostile towards Jesus Christ and Christians and the morality of God. So how can we advance? So thinking about all that, how can we advance the kingdom of God in such an environment and, and, and be effective without becoming predatory to the wolves in the world? And, and Matthew chapter 10, verse 18 and 19 says, You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about what you will say. Do not worry what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you shall speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of the Father who speaks in you. So as followers of Christ and as our job serving Him is to finish the work that He's already started here on earth. And, and we, we must remain obedient to Him, doing the Father's will. And, and as He will never abandon us. And He will always give us what we need. Always. Including the right words at just the right time. And, and we see proof of this as we read through the book of Acts. We, we see that testimony of Peter, Stephen, and even Paul. As we, we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, we, we are able to speak for Christ and to testify about Him. We need to be like Christ in a world that is hostile towards Him, about Him, and about His message. And Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 and 23 says, Now brother will deliver up brother to death, and father his ch child, and children will rise up, uh, up against their parents and cause them to be, part, uh, to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Christians have faced oppositions for decades even today our brothers and sisters are facing opposition for their faith in some countries faith in Christ is punishable to death martyrs for their faith from the earliest times Christians have been crucified they have been burned impaled they've been drowned starved imprisoned and shunned for no other reason that they belong to Christ Jesus for their faith. And should this stop us from proclaiming our faith in Christ? No. Why would and, and, and that question, right? Why would why would the world, you know, be so hostile to our Christian faith? Because it's all about soul winning warfare. The battle for souls. And, and, and this should grip our mind and our heart. That this should be the central theme and purpose in our spiritual lives. And that time when we have left until Christ returns, that, that, that should be our focus. How much time do we really have left until the rapture? I mean, we don't know, but we know with the birth pains it's getting closer. So we cannot allow ourselves to become cold and self-centered in our spirit 
that we are reluctant to do any outreaches, uh, sharing our faith in Him as He as our, as as in our personal lives as we serve our our King Jesus. So we don't walk in fear. You know, Satan would love for us to walk in fear and stay in our little box and not do anything because he doesn't want us to win any souls. It's interesting, I, I came across this, it says, Charles Simeon wrote, concerning being wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove, he, he wrote, now the wisdom of the one and the harmlessness of the other are very desirable to be combined in the Christian's character because it is by such an union and only that a Christian will be able to cope successfully with his or her powerful enemies. It's hard for people to be compared to the snake, right? We don't, we're like, nah, I don't really want to be compared to the snake. It's not cool. But it's easy for people to be compared to the dove, right? But you see, Jesus is not attaching himself or asking us to be attached to the snake as in a bad behavior or as in demonic or as in a Satan. That's not the point. Jesus is bringing to light the good aspects, or excuse me, the good assets of the snake as the shrewdness is an asset, not a, a defect. To be wise as a serpent is to be subtle, to be crafty, to be sh and shrewd. It's having a clear understanding and good judgment of any situation that you may be in, usually resulting in, a, in an advantage, right? It's using that shrewdness as in your advantage to navigate through whatever you're go going through. But it's also being an intelligent tactile, strategic, and wise, and understanding human nature, right? That's big for us. You know, we, sometimes we get so caught up in our Christianese that we forget the human nature of the world. And so it's good for us to have that wisdom of the human nature of the world so we can, can navigate through all those things. And also having the discernment of spirits. It's, it's very crucial to have that. What's going on in the spiritual realm? Being in touch with their environment, sensitive to your surrounding, not easily fooled or seduced. It's living in the spirit. See, being shrewd is where a person looks at the world, at the, at the world-minded person or even a group of people and anticipating their course of action and, and, and the plans that their own but, but we, having the Holy Spirit wisdom, based on the strategic actions, we, we navigate accordingly and all the while not co compromising our righteousness. Does that make sense? So like, we want to be able to navigate through all those things, living in the Spirit, having the Holy Spirit, giving us a strategic plan to how to navigate through it, but all the while not compromising. To be innocent and harmless as a dove is an exercise of, of neither being naive nor, nor in any kind of deception. The dove is a symbol of the Spirit of God and to be innocent and harmless. And the dove is listed as one of the clean animals. And I think it's Leviticus chapter 14, I think. It's one of the clean animals in the Bible. With the Spirit of God, there is found serenity. See, serenity is this, this peace. This peace that only comes to the Father through His security, knowing He will never leave you, never forsake you. That's the peace. That's the serenity that you have in the midst of all the hostile world that we live in. And, and, and also with the heart of God, which is reconciliation, which is God's heart. His heart to bring people together, to bring revival, and to bring peace into people's hearts in the midst of chaos. Right? The dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. As Jesus was baptized, the, the dove descended on his head. So the dove is the, the essence of 
or the symbol of power and authority. So we are innocent and gentle as a dove, but we walk in meekness. And the Holy Spirit's reminding me right now, the dove also knows when to flee. You ever notice, like, you know, how skittish the dove is? Just because it's wise, it knows when to go. Meekness is yielding our rights to God so we, so He can demonstrate His peace and power through us. In Hebrew, the word is translated anav, which means to humble oneself or to be bowed down, to be mild and to be humble. Meekness is not weakness. Meekness is not weakness. It is strength under God's control. And, it, and it, as the gentleness of a person following Christ, as the greatness of a person following Christ is the measure of their surrender and humility towards Him. Ever notice those great men and women that served God, how meek they were and how humble they really were? Our lives picture the dove. We are innocent. When we are, as we are Christians born again, we, our lives, our spirit, the spirit of God in us is, is clean. It's without spot or stain. And this enables us to walk in authority. And when the time comes of being concerned or, or, or when the time comes and being concerned or, or people set a trap, we are innocent nothing being able to be ensnared upon us and people not being able to hold any sin or corruption upon us as we are clean and it's important to really get grasped at that we are already clean but we we are innocent as doves and, and by the spirit of god we navigate through the hostile word so we do not get slimed or we do not get in part that is negative does that make sense so we want to continue as a dove to like flee out of an area when it's time to flee right with this teaching of jesus is to bring the positive effects of the serpent and the dove as we are our christian faith and taking the gospel to a hostile world we we must be wise avoiding the snares that are set for us and we must be innocent serving the lord blamelessly Jesus does not want us to walk in fear or being naive in our surroundings. That's, that's not the point. The point is that we don't, he wants to avoid that for us. We're not to stoop into any kind of deception, but to, but the, but to model both the characteristics of both the serpent and the dove in a positive way. Wisdom does not equal dishonesty. Right? We don't use dishonest ways to navigate through stuff. And to be innocent does not equal gullibility either. We're not gullible, right? But we are called to be Christ-like, modeling the behavior of Jesus, how he handled the situations that need these two qualities in the serpent and the dove. This is a kingdom of God technique. Living high above in the spiritual realm, walking in the presence of God in such a way that we are in tune to our surroundings. This is dove-like man of Christ, a man of innocence, spoke boldly and clearly with assertiveness. See Matthew chapter 7 verse 29 in the Amplified. For he was teaching them as one who had authority teach uh, entirely of his own uh, volition and, and, and as not a, as the scribes who relied on others to confirm their authority the scribes pretend uh, excuse me yeah the scribes prete uh, pretended to have authority but it's only et uh, external ad advantages but Jesus spoke with his, his authority as he is God, right? So the world has only its ex external authority. It's only external. And, and any authority 
given to them is only by God himself. But we, as children of God, walking blamelessly before him, we walk in his authority, his knowledge and understanding. He lives in us, eternal. The world is external, we are internal. And through us, he is omnipresent. So he is wherever we go, he is there. And saying this, we are in a greater and higher advantage than to the hostile world. We live in because we serve the God who created the world and breathed life into the individuals that we come in contact with. (laughs) So, I mean, if anything, we are at a higher advantage, right? We got to think that way, that we are at a higher advantage because we serve God, right? He is in us. He's eternal. We're going to a world that is external. It's all about them. The Pharisees look at the outside, but there's nothing really on the inside. And as, as we are Holy Spirit filled, we walk in the gifts of the Spirit. That is why we must walk humbly and with meekness. It's power. It's God's power. So we walk in meekness. It's, poor, it's important to understand that because we just don't know. You know, it's like you, you have a weapon. You don't go just fling it around everywhere. Right? We use it under control. Our, our, our gifts are under control. That is why we must walk humbly and with as we have Christ's authority and power. And we're, we're not here to destroy lives, but we're here to restore lives. Authority is being at rest. Authority is being at rest, sitting, being calm, collective, understanding what is going on. Being aware in the spiritual realm, right? Being aware brings brings calmness because we're aware of what's going on. So if God reveals something to you that's going on in the spirit, it's not to freak us out. It's actually so that we're not blindsided so that we can remain calm. And as he reveals it to us, he already has a way of escape. We need to have peace as we live in the Spirit of God. That's as we live in the Spirit, right? In His presence, we have peace. The world, and, and this is cool, right? So the world is like an ocean. Think of the world as an ocean. It's deep, dark, and hostile. With storms, with many obstacles and creatures. But God has given us all the proper equipment that is needed to live in that ocean that it will not harm us. But if we do not take the proper precautions as written as the written word of God, then the ocean can end up hurting us or even worse can put us to death. We must do all that we can to take all the precautions of Jesus and to walk with him that we can live in this ocean and prosper and live in peace. This is why This teaching is a must for us to, so that we're, as we're living in this hostile world, that we can live like Christ and learn from him so we can navigate through all the experiences that we go through and the people that we endure. Jesus knew how not not to be caught up with any net or trap that they would try to ensnare in him. His enemies thought they would try to ensnare him, but the, the wisdom of the Spirit of God helped him navigate through all of that. Like in Mark chapter 8, verses 11, the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking him a sign from heaven, testing him. Mark chapter 10, verse 2, the Pharisees came and asked him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? Testing him. And Mark chapter 12, verse 13, then they sent him to him, Jesus, some of the Pharisees and the Herodians, to catch him in his words when they had come they said to him teacher we know that you are true and you care about no one which is already wrong for you are do not are the person of men but teach us the way of god and truth is it lawful to pay taxes to caesar or not should we pay or shall we not But knowing their hypocrisy, 
he, he said to them, Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius that I may see it. So they brought it. And he said to them, Whose image and inscription is on this coin? They said it's, to him, it's, it's Caesar. And Jesus answered them and said to them, Render to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God the things of God. And they marveled at him. See, this is a true example of how Jesus is teaching us to not to be. It's for us to be shrewd and to be innocent as a dove. The Pharisees were religious, and the Herodians were political supporters of King Herod. They thought they had little in common except that they shared a desire to take Jesus down. It's all they wanted. They, all of them. They just wanted to take him down. They were excited. They thought they had him. They, they were so excited. They thinking that they had set that trap, that it was a no-win situation for Jesus. They, they, see, they, they thought that the crowds would be furious if Jesus said, yes, pay taxes to Caesar. Just blatantly said that. He would have lost their respect for him. If he would have said no, they could announce that he was promoting sedition since the Jews were required to pay taxes. But Jesus saw right through their trap. Jesus knew it was all hypocrisy. They were testing him for their own gain. And he said, get what belongs to the governing authorities and give to God what belongs to God. And Romans chapter 13 is all about us and the governing authorities. I, 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 I encourage all of you to read Romans chapter 13 and to really absorb it. It says, Let every soul be subjected to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So Jesus was teaching them to submit to the governing authorities as long, right? As long as it doesn't cause you to sin against him. And Paul also adopted the skill of being wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. He lived in a dove-like innocence and good conscience before God in Acts chapter 23 verse 1. He learned, see, Paul learned how to deny his carnal desires as to not jeopardize his ministry, or you could say even his life as a Christian. You know, he didn't want to jeopardize, you know, who he was as a Christian. He learned to deny that carnal desire. But, um, and 1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself might be, uh, become disqualified. He knew this, his, he, and, and just saying that, it, it's important for us, right? When we're walking as Christians in, the, in our surroundings, our workplace, our home, our friends, whatever, our churches, whatever it may be, when we're walking innocent as a dove, they have nothing on you. They cannot pin you on anything. Even if they try, right, um, you will come out and they'll have nothing on you. That's the point. That we, we hold on to the stature of us being Christians and being righteous. Paul also knew his legal rights as a Roman citizen and he used the system to his advantage. As we read in, in Acts chapter 16 and 22 and 25. He was also carefully crafted his speeches to maximize the impact of his audiences. See, see how he's adapting this being wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. See, Paul was being wise and navigating through all the things that he was going through, right? Being, them trying to imprison him. He was stoned, shipwrecked. You know, people were coming against him. The Jews were, in the book of Acts, were marching behind him, following him, trying to ensnare him, trying to trap him, trying to get rid of him, basically. But he was able to navigate through all of that, through his the wisdom of the Spirit of God and being innocent as a dove. They had nothing on him, and he continued to march forward. And we should strive to be gentle without 
being pushovers, right? We, just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we're pushovers and weak. And we must be sacrificial, right? Being Christ-like without being taken advantage of as well. And, and being wise and, and being assertive without blame. Being aware of the, all the tactics of the enemy, but also be always taking the high road. Always taking the high road by living in the Spirit of God. And 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, astrain, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, that they uh, may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Just exactly what I just spoke on. As followers of Christ, as God's possession sets us apart from the corrupt ways of the world. We are a part of the kingdom of God, not of this world. We do not identify, nor do we give into any kind of deception or destructive influences of the ways of the surrounding society. The society says, hate that person, right? The society says this, the society says that, but we always take the high road living in the Spirit of God. We are simply passing through living in this world system like, like it's Babylon. And, and we are con to conduct our business here and to prosper and to be blameless, serving God, influencing this world to the faith and the morality of God, teaching them to observe the teachings of the Scripture by living right in front of them, and, and, and if it may be, to even speak to them. So that's the point. We are pilgrims. We are here to be the salt, be the light. You remember that sermon? It's amazing and it's beautiful. We're here to give flavor. We're here to help, right? We read and study the Scriptures being discipled to learn and how to live in the society and to serve God in righteousness at the same time. It's tough. It is. It's not easy to remain blameless, righteous, holy, all those things, and living in a hostile world with all its influences, is it? But God gives us the power to do it. And that's why we must read and study Scripture. That's why it's so, so important to be disciples. Yes. We must love each other. Iron sharpens iron. We love each other. We help each other. We teach each other. It's not about, oh, I'm better than you and you're better than me. It's none of that. We're all the same, on the same level, all for the same glory, to glorify God, yes. for us to help each other, to lift each other up, so that we all, like, a, 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 like, a, like, a, like an army marching through this hostile world, all marching to heaven, right? And we're, as we're marching through, we're trying to gather as many, come on, you come, you know, trying to march through and trying to gather as many people as we can. Mm, thank you, Jesus. We're here to bring glory to God and to His name. That is so important, especially in this world today, that there's labels and things like that. No, there's only one label. If we're going to give anyone label, there's only one, and his name is Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said, all I know is Jesus Christ and him crucified. But we got to read and study our scriptures. We got to, we, we have to. We gotta remain humble and teachable, no matter who we are or what level we're at. If we're brand new in the Lord or in the 50 years, we, we need to remain humble and teachable. And, and we always say, right, we, we remain by listening and obeying God, doing all that we can to live in the Spirit every day that we walk. That is why it, reading and studying Scripture, praying, Entering into the presence of God, fasting, right? All these are important in our Christian walk. We have to be 
like our batteries have to be full every day. So we never know what we're gonna we're gonna endure. We need to be sharp because we never know what the day will bring. What trap might be set that day? What testing may come? What accusations may come? So we do all things we can to remain sharp in the Spirit of God so we can be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Fulfilling the call. We're f- every one of us are trying to fulfill the call. We're doing our best. We're doing our best to fulfill the call to walk in the footsteps of Jesus, bearing fruit wherever we go. Amen? I hope that, really, I, I really hope that this message blesses you because this is so important. So I encourage you through this week, since it's fresh on your mind, I encourage you to read through the scripture and pray through. Ask God to give you any revelations. Where is it that you need to be sharp? You know, where is it that you're dull? Where is it that you're sharp? You know, so that way there's a balance. You know, what areas do you need to work on that so that way you can be sharp, right? Do we need to study scripture more? Do we need to enter in his presence more? Do we need to pray more? And that old word we all hate, fasting. Maybe we need to fast every once in a while. You know, those are the things we just need to ask the Lord. Okay, Lord, what do we, what do I need to do? So, Because I, I want to be sharp, Lord. I want to bring that 5%. 5% of salt will, will um, hinder any bad growth. Right? So we... Wherever we're working, wherever we are, we want to bring that 5%. We're the 5%. So wherever you're working, that, that's because you're the 5%. God is trying to bring that His Spirit, His presence to your workplace. Amen? So I really hope that this has blessed you and has brought to light what it means to be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. You know, to bring... That's what the whole point of this. I really... You know, as... A minute, you know, as your brother, as it were, I just want to help you guys, even myself. I mean, even putting this together, it really blessed me. Um, you know, it's all that stuff, you know, where we know stuff, but sometimes we need to roll the Rolodex through and say, oh, pull this number out, right? And so that's what the point of this is, because we need to be sharp, right? We're living in a hostile world. Things are wrapping up, you know, Christians are being persecuted. And, and, and now it's even starting here in, in America, right? I mean, I, I, on the uh, Christian network, right? We're, we're constantly hearing this person, that person being persecuted because of the faith, right? And we need to properly know how to navigate through it. But I also want you to remember that you can trust God. You can really trust Him because He's a loving Father. He really loves you and He's going to walk through all of this with you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. Even if we mess up, it's not like we're we're out. You know, he's going to help us no matter what we go through. So this has been a great reminder as me. And and uh, and as we live in this hostile world system, we, we know that the Holy Spirit is in you. And he's going to help you navigate through all this stuff. Right. And so any situation, conversation or whatever we may have, he will help you through. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. And I just pray we thank you for this message, Lord. I pray this continue just to flow and water us, Lord, and to give us this revelation, Lord, and and that the the light would click on, Lord, how to be able to deal with the things that we go through in our workplaces or, or home or whatever that we, you know, wherever it may be, family, ministry lord that we can just be able to navigate through all of that lord with your wisdom and being sharp lord and being wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove lord because we're here to bring flavor to the world we're here to to gather as many people as we can to share our faith not to walk in fear but to walk in wisdom and we thank you father that you always give us what to say right at the exact moment so that tells us that we don't not have to fear. Even in our processing through all of the, those difficult situations, we can rest and have peace because you will ultimately give us exactly what to say. So we thank you, Father. We love you. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you for discipling us. Yes. Lord, we thank you that you are not leaving us as orphans or unaware. 
And we thank you, Lord, that you help us, Lord, in all the ways and every day. We thank you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Let's remember the Lord. Um, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you everlasting peace. Remember, read and study your Bibles. Pray without ceasing. Be the salt. Be the light. Preach to all who have ears to hear. And remember, listen and obey God. Go in peace because your Prince of Peace is with you. See you next week. Amen. 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 Bless you. Have a mirror. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that it has blessed you. And uh, we'll see you next week. Okay?